Hello friends, in this lecture we are going to discuss about the glucocorticoids. Let's get started. The functions of the glucocorticoids. Now as far as the glucocorticoid is concerned, remember that the glucocorticoid or cortisol has a two type of function. Right? One type of function is basically related with the metabolism. Another type of the function is responsible to resist or to prevent stress. And without this second function, resistance that is provided to stress, the person will die due to very minor illness or stress. So, glucocorticoid are not essential for life. Rather, glucocorticoid is important for long continued life. While on the other hand, mineralocorticoid are important or essential to just merely life. While in the glucocorticoid is important to fight against stress and minor illnesses, so it is important for long continued life. Now all the glucocorticoid effect, 95% of the glucocorticoid effect is basically the cortisol. It is also known as a hydrocortisone. It is the end product that we discussed in our previous lecture of a glucocorticoid pathway. And remaining will be provided by corticosterone. Now, if you guys do not know what is corticosterone, go through the synthesis of the steroid hormone lecture. In that lecture, the, this corticosterone will be provided in a pathway that is eventually synthesized a mineralocorticoid. Right? So, it is intermediate product of the mineralocorticoid synthesis pathway and yet that corticosterone has a 5% or 5 to 10 percent of a glucocorticoid axon as well remember that it is very important once we discuss about the deficiency of different enzyme in applied aspect so let me repeat one more time glucocorticoid the cortisol that is the end product of a glu glucocorticoid pathway will basically responsible for 95 percent of the glucocorticoid activity and corticosterone that is actually a intermediate product of mineralocorticoid pathway it basically responsible for the remaining glucocorticoid activity now here's the case if by somehow glucocorticoid do not produce let's say in 11 hydroxylase deficiency this corticosterone is yet able to produce in mineralocorticoid and because of the higher amount of this corticosterone ultimately we see glucocorticoid activity or rather higher amount of glucocorticoid activity and right, that we discuss in our applied aspect once we discuss about the deficiency of the 21 hydroxylase or 11 hydroxylase enzyme deficiency now effect of the gluco let's discuss about the effect of the glucocorticoid in detail so let's enumerate in which heading we are going to understand the effect of glucocorticoid so these are the headings effect on metabolism effect on muscle, effect on bone, on GIT, on connective tissue, on blood cells and on fetus. So if in exam, if, if a glucocorticoid is asked for a long question, you need to write it down, effect of glucocorticoid on all this tissue. And as far as the metabolism is concerned, three metabolism is most important as you guys already know, protein, carbohydrate and fat. So let's discuss the metabolism the effect of glucocorticoid on metabolism let's discuss first the protein uh, sorry the carbohydrate now effect on carbohydrate is basically conserve carbohydrate as i told you very frequently that hormone that starts with the g 95 percent of the cases it will eventually increase the carbohydrate right for example growth hormone then glucagon glucocorticoid right now how it will conserve carbohydrate how it will increase the blood glucose level so the answer is first thing it will do it will increase glucose synthesis most of the effect of the glucocorticoid is same as growth hormone so do not try to do not try to remember two things differently most of the action let's say 90 to 95 percent of the action is similar over the carbohydrate of growth hormone as well as glucocorticoid so first thing it will do it increase glucose synthesis what it is what is known as stimulate gluconeogenesis it synthesizes new glucose from non carbohydrate source so what are the carbohydrate source what are the non carbohydrate source it is amino acid so 
in order to synthesize more amount of glucose what glucocorticoid will do it will increase the mobilization of the amino acid from the muscle right now amino acid are present inside now amino acid will be catabolized from the muscle sorry the protein will be catabolized from the muscle and eventually it release the amino acid and that amino acid will enter inside the liver and inside the liver there is a synthesis of glucocortic uh, sorry the uh, glucose right so in order to convert amino acid into the glucose they require particular enzyme so what glucocorticoid will do it will eventually increase the enzyme required for this conversion and the last one if it antagonize the effect of insulin over the decrease gluconeogenesis you see by increase glucose synthesis it eventually increase the blood glucose level that will leads to more amount of insulin release and that more amount of insulin will eventually decrease the gluconeogenesis that thing we do not know uh, we don't want in glucocorticoid metabolic effect so what glucocorticoid do it will antagonize the effect of insulin over gluconeogenesis so what is the effect of insulin over the gluconeogenesis it will decrease the gluconeogenesis so by antagonizing the effect of insulin glucocorticoid will eventually increase glucose synthesis now this is all about glucose synthesis second thing this glucocorticoid do is similar that it will uh, uh, as the growth hormone it is basically decrease the glucose utilization of the cell how it will decrease the glucose utilization of the cell basically it decrease the entry of the glucose inside the cell now in order to enter glucose inside the cell basically the muscle adipose tissue it and heart we need a particular transporter that known as a glut trans glut right glucose transporter and the main transporter or glut transporter that is responsible for entry of the glucose inside the muscle that is glut 4 so in order to decrease uptake of the glucose what glucocorticoid do it will decrease the translocation of the glut4 inside us over the cell membrane of the muscle second thing this glucocorticoid will do insulin resistance now what is insulin resistance insulin resistance is that there is a presence of insulin yet insulin is not able to act so how it will do insulin resistance it increase uh, sorry it decrease the expression of uh, insulin responsive substance 1 and pi3 kinase what it will do the glucocorticoid will decrease the substrate insulin responsive substrate 1 and phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase now this irs has a 1 2 3 4 subtypes for glucocorticoid will work glucocorticoid will work over irs1 now this irs1 and phosphatidyl both are involved in the glucocorticoid this insulin action so this is all about the effect of carbohydrate effect of glucocorticoid over the carbohydrate in single slide now via this slide you can easily imagine what will happens when there is excess glucocorticoid right this is the effect of glucocorticoid that it will increase glucose synthesis and decrease glucose utilization so what would be the result if there are more amount of cortisol present in a free form or in the circulation that is about applied aspect right so let discuss that applied aspect along with the effect of glucocorticoid so in somehow once we apply, approach the applied aspect it is very easy to remember and understand so what will happens if there is a excess amount of cortisol obviously there are more amount of glucose inside the circulation that is hyperglycemia and insulin is not able to act so basically it perform it do glucose intolerance our body cannot decrease glucose level as it should be and that condition is known as diabetes mellitus so in excess amount of cortisol it will leads to glucose intolerance and diabetes mellitus these are the clinical features of the higher amount of cortisol there is known as cushing syndrome remember the term cushing syndrome right that we discuss in our applied aspect now the diabetes mellitus that is done by glucocorticoid it is known as adrenal diabetes so what is adrenal diabetes so if in 
comment if someone ask you in comment that what is adrenal diabetes what you should write it down you have to write it down in this fashion glucocorticoid will increase the rate of the gluconeogenesis and decrease the rate of glucose utilization so ultimately it causes increased blood glucose concentration so once the glucose concentration is in the higher amount there are increased insulin secretion now as i told you in earlier slide glucocorticoid will do insulin resistance right so high amount of glucocorticoid eventually decrease the insulin sensitivity over the skeletal muscle and over the adipose tissue now as i told you in our insulin lecture that insulin is basically responsible for uptake of glucose in three tissue mainly one is the heart then muscle and adipose tissue remember hema i told you in that lecture h stands for heart a stands for adipose tissue and m stands for muscle skeletal muscle so blood glucose level is increase more than 50% and that condition is known as diabetes and it is due to the adrenal cause it is known as adrenal diabetes so in that diabetes if you give insulin to a person it is not effective what it why because glucocorticoid is already higher side in this adrenal diabetes patient so if you give more and more amount of insulin that insulin is not going to work so you have to cure the root of a disease that you have to set the glucocorticoid level over the normal side this is all about the effect of glucocorticoid over the carbohydrate now let's the let's see the effect of glucocorticoid over the protein metabolism now in order to increase gluconeogenesis it increase the availability of the raw material the raw material is amino acid so in order to get more amount of amino acid what glucocorticoid will do it will increase the amino acid mobilization from the muscle basically for the gluconeogenesis right this is about the extra hepatic action of glucocorticoid see let's divide the action of glucocorticoid over protein in two one is hepatic action that is action of glucocorticoid over liver another one is extra hepatic that is muscle so basically what glucocorticoid do to the skeletal muscle or to extra hepatic protein it will decrease the extra hepatic protein that terminology is given in guideline extra hepatic and hepatic so in order to decrease extra hepatic protein what glucocorticoid will do it will increase catabolism and decrease protein synthesis so it make sure that there are more amount of amino acid is available for gluconeogenesis so as the protein metabolism will take place it will increase amino acid mobilization and this amino acid will enter inside the liver so what happens to the protein that is synthesized by liver it will increase hepatic protein and plasma protein so it increase transport of the amino acid into the liver and eventually increase protein synthesis so there are two type of action over the protein metabolism do not confused with it the single slide show you increase protein and decrease protein by glucocorticoid remember that glucocorticoid has a two type of action over protein metabolism one action is over the hepatic tissue that is liver another action is over the extra hepatic tissue that is muscle what it will do to the hepatic protein it will increase protein synthesis what it will do to the extra hepatic protein it will decrease protein synthesis and increase catabolism so again as far as the applied aspect is concerned what happens whenever there is excess cortisol so there are more amount of catabolism so muscle become weak it is shown in this diagram muscle become weak and myopathy will occur that's why i picked this picture now how cortisol will increase hepatic protein so it increase the amino acid transport in the hepatic cell or the liver cell and it will use for synthesis of a protein so it is very basic diagram that is shown over here more amount of protein catabolism over the muscle and eventually person will lose the muscle, muscle protein and this muscle protein will catabolize into amino acid and that amino acid will eventually enter inside the liver and it will also increase the enzyme in the liver for the protein synthesis so basically 
it eventually increase the formation of the plasma protein and some of the amino acid is converted into the glucose as well in gluconeogenesis so cortisol basically increase the protein synthesis in liver now one more thing the effect on cate- uh, connective tissue now cortisol basically inhibit the fibroblast proliferation and the uh, collagen formation cortisol inhibit the fibroblast proliferation and collagen formation that both this thing will be responsible for the actual tone of a skin so in excess cortisol what will happen it eventually causes thinning of a skin and when the skin become very thin it will be easy to stretch so you can see a stretch mark over the skin it is the hallmark or the diagnostic feature of a cushing syndrome it is known as abdominal stria got it so cortisol basically inhibit the fibroblast proliferation so normally it should not uh, normal level it does not inhibit the fibroblast proliferation but once the cortisol in very higher amount in excess amount of the cortisol it will leads to the stretch mark over the abdomen that is shown in this diagram it is known as stretch mark and the thinning of also thinning of the capillaries so it also decrease the easy to get bruise this is all about the effect on connective tissue so in cushing syndrome in excess amount of cortisol this two is the clinical feature one is the abdominal stria and one other one is the easy bruising now effect on fat metabolism now what cortisol do cortisol will use fat for the energy again the action is similar to the growth hormone it increase use fat for the energy so basically glucocorticoid will do lipolysis now by lipolysis it will mobilize the fatty acid from the adipose tissue let me show you on a diagram see this is the one glycerol molecule and this glycerol molecule has a three chain attached to it this three chain are the fatty acid so this entire molecule three fatty acid chain along with the glycerol it is known as a triglyceride got it now in order to get lipolysed this three chain of a fatty acid will be dislodged from this glycerol molecule like this got it and this free fatty acid will eventually enter inside the blood circulation right so the enzyme responsible for the cut down of this bond between glycerol and this free fatty acid it is hormone sensitive lipase yes it is hormone sensitive lipase and in order to get lipogenesis the hormone responsible for attachment of the three fatty acid with the glycerol that enzyme sorry the responsible for uh, this is a hormone sensitive lipase i am not going to tell you about the lipo um, uh, lipoprotein lipase because it gives this picture complicated now in this diagram just remember that by somehow cortisol will stimulate the hormone sensitive lipase that hormone sensitive lipase will eventually cut down the bond between triglyceride and glycerol uh, sorry fatty acid and glycerol and eventually fatty acid get released inside the blood stream got it so what it will do it will increase free fatty acid inside the plasma and it will this fatty acid will utilize for energy and also increase the oxidation of the fatty acid inside a cell got it now how cortisol will increase lipolysis that we discuss already cortisol will in- decrease transport of glucose into the fat cell by inhibiting the glut4 that we already discussed in our cort- effect of glucocorticoid or carbohydrate metabolism it will decrease the expression of the glut4 so by in decrease expression of the glut4 it will decrease the transport of glucose into the fatty acid so the glycerol that we need in order to synthesize triglyceride it is not present because it is basically derived from the glycerol that glycerol has a name known as alpha glycerophosphate the glycerol that is written over here in order to lipogenesis we need glycerol so by decreasing the glucose transport there are less amount of glucose available inside the adipose tissue that get converted into the alpha glycerophosphate and that glycerol is required for both the thing for deposition and maintenance of the triglyceride so in absence of the glycerol or alpha glycerophosphate fat cell begin to release fatty acid got it 
Now, what happens whenever there is an excess amount of the cortisol? It will leads to obesity. Now, you might be thinking that cortisol is going to use fat for the energy, and how the person get obese? Right. The answer we are going to discuss in this slide. Despite free fatty acid mobilization and utilization, many people develop peculiar type of the obesity. How it will develop the peculiar type of the very particular type of the obesity? Because obesity is not related with the lipolysis, but it is due to increased food intake. This obesity is not due to lipogenesis, but it is due to increased food intake. Person can not use glucose as a source of energy, so satiety center is not stimulated. So ultimately, patient will eat more amount of the food. So yet fat is used for energy, but person will be eating more and more amount of the food. So person get obese. So fat generation is higher than fat metabolism and oxidation. Now what peculiar type of the obesity is there? What particular type of the obesity is that? You need to remember three things. One is the chest. There is excess deposition of the fat over the chest. Then buffalo like torso. The torso of a person will be like buffalo like torso. That is this region. And moon face. The person having a very round face. It is known as moon's face. Now one more thing that you need to remember is effect of glucocorticoid or the permissive action of a glucocorticoid. Yes. Now, what is permissive action? Glucose, glucocorticoid give permission to the other enzyme, other hormone to perform their action. So, glucocorticoid is actually not responsible for that action, but little amount of glucocorticoid is should be present for the action of that particular hormone. Let understand that very thoroughly. A little amount of glucocorticoid must be present in the number of metabolic reaction to occur. Now, although glucocorticoid is not produce that action by the enzymes, right? The action is supposed to produce by that particular other enzyme or the hormone. This action is known as permissive action. Let me repeat one more time. Glucocorticoid some hormones are eventually perform their function. Now, in order to make that function available by that particular hormone, they require little amount of glucocorticoid. Right? That glucocorticoid is actually not performing that function, but it gives permission to that hormone to get their action. Right? Now, let's give an example. First example is basically the catecholamines and glucagon. To exert calorigenic action of the glucocorticoid uh, uh, effect of glucagon and catecholamines. So this calorigenic effect is done by glucagon and catecholamines, but some amount of cortisol should be present in order to make this calorigenic effect. Now the other example is the lipolytic effect of the catecholamines. So catecholamine is also perform lipolytic effect, but in order to perform this lipolytic effect, small amount of cortisol should be present. And the third one is the catecholamine to produce pressure response. That is the blood pressure effect of the catecholamines and bronchodilation. So basically there are very little amount of glucocorticoid should be present. That little amount of glucocorticoid will give the permission to the catecholamines and glucagon to perform their action. Now effect on bone. The effect of glucocorticoid over the bone. So what cortisol will do? It will increase bone resorption. How glucocorticoid will do bone resorption? It will increase activity of osteoclast and increase activity of collagenase. Now as you know, bone has a two type of tissue. One is organic material and another one is inorganic material. Right? Now it increases the activity of the osteoclast so what osteoclast do osteoclast is basically dissolve the bone and what collagenase do it will break down the collagen that is present in organic portion of the bone and it also decrease bone formation so it will decrease collagen synthesis and also decrease formation of the osteoblast and one more thing it also increase the apoptosis Yes, what is apoptosis? Apoptosis is cell death. It is programmed cell death. 
So cortisol will increase the rate of apoptosis of the two cells that is osteoblast and osteocyte. It also decreases the calcium absorption through GIT and yes, antagonizing the action of the vitamin D and increase calcium excretion in urine. Now let me give you one more thing that is once you learn the action of the steroid drug and the side effect of that steroid drug are all the side effect or all the effect that is present in excess cortisol. So the more pronounced side effect of the steroid drug is that it causes bone fracture. Got it? Why it causes bone fracture? Because it increases bone resorption and decreases bone formation. And eventually it will do excess cortisol which eventually leads to osteoporosis, weakening of the bone and osteopenia. Got it? These two things it will do. It will do decrease bone formation and increase bone resorption now remember the effect of bone right it eventually causes the fracture now effect on blood vessel yeah, sorry blood cells so there are the effect it increases eosinophil level it decreases the basophil number and it decreases the lymphocyte count so what it increase it increase again three things it will increase neutrophil it will increase rbc and increase platelet but it's the most important cell that you need to remember in effect of cortisol is the eosinophil. So cortisol and eosinophil count are inversely related. If there are more amount of cortisol, there are less amount of eosinophil. If there is less amount of cortisol, there is more amount of eosinophil. So let me give you one more thing. There is a diurnal variation occur in the cortisol level. That is cortisol level is high in the morning and cortisol level is less in the evening so exactly opposite will happen in the eosinophil count eosinophil count is low in the morning and high in the evening now from this very slide one comment is actually asked that eosinophil count is low in the morning so what you should write it down in such kind of comment you have to write it down like that and there is a diurnal variation that occur in the cortisol level and the cortisol level will leads to decrease eosinophil count and cortisol level is high in the early morning so eosinophil count is low in that morning and high in the evening right this is all about the comment that you should write it down in exam now yes facilitate maturation of the fetus the action of a cortisol over the fetus is that it causes the maturation of a fetus what it will maturate it will maturate the cns it will maturate the lung maturation of the lung how it will mature the lung it will access the production of surfactant so if there are chances of the premature birth the gynecologist will give the injection of the hydrocortisone to the mother there are two injections of 25 mg at 24 hours apart. Now maturation of the GIT, it allows the fetus or the newborn to digest milk. Got it? This is all about our action of a glucocorticoid over the metabolism. Now in the next lecture, we are going to discuss about the effect of glucocorticoid over the...